In this video, I show basic rifle load development using a comparator, making custom loads with the bullets set to a specific depth for my gun can improve accuracy. So currently I'm using the 150 grain full metal jacket here that I'm pointing at, and then I'm going to try a number of 168 grain rounds as well as a 175 grain from Sierra. So we'll see how accurate we can get with them. Here are the basic parts of a comparator. The first part you need is your calipers. Next you need the push rod system and to that you attach a tapped case specific for your rifle. In this case it's a 308. It just screws on the end of the push rod assembly. Next is the housing, and on top of the housing is a bushing that's specific for your caliber. In this case, it's a 30 caliber bushing on the end of the housing. The housing fits into the calipers. You just unscrew the screw pin, put it into the calipers, tighten the screw pin, and then close up the calipers. Once everything is nice and tight, then you re-zero the calipers to zero. How a comparator works, if you're not familiar with it, is you just take the projectile that you'll be loading, you put it into the casing, you put the whole casing into the chamber as far as it will go, then using the push rod you push the bullet forward until it stops, and it stops when it hits the lands of the rifling within your barrel. You then tighten the screw pin at the base of the push rod assembly and take it out of your gun. With everything still assembled, you take your caliper and measure the distance from the base of the cartridge to the ogive of the projectile, not the overall length, and this measurement is the length that you need when reloading. What's going on inside of your gun when you're doing this is that you push the case forward all the way and then the bullet gets pushed forward until it hits the rifling that you see in the picture. Basically, you're getting a tight fit of that bullet up against the lands, so when reloading, you back the bullet just a few hundredths of an inch off of the measurement that you got uh, when pushing the bullet forward, and then that will really increase the accuracy of your round. You see, the less that the bullet has to travel forward until it hits uh, the rifling of your gun or the lands, then the more, accuracy, the more accurate your round is and has uh, less opportunity for the bullet to wiggle or hit the barrel maybe off center and potentially uh, decrease the accuracy uh, of your bullet downrange. I'm going to measure the base to ogive of three bullets in each of the different types of bullets, bullets that I'll be measuring. There can be slight discrepancies or differences between the bullets, so I'll measure three bullets and then take the, ac the average of those three. This is how I take the actual base to ogive measurements with the bullet loaded into the case. I insert it into the chamber until it won't move forward any further. And then I push the bullet forward with the push rod until it stops, meaning it's hit the lands. Then I tighten the push rod using the set screw so that way I can accurately measure the base to ogive of the bullet. I push everything out using a cleaning rod that I keep in the barrel. Finally, I measure the base to ogive of that specific round in my specific gun. It will be unique to that bullet and my gun, so obviously these rounds that I will be reloading can't be used in anybody else's gun. When setting the bullet depth, the bullet depth will be two hundredths of an inch less than what I measured here. So now I'm just going to go ahead and prepare my brass. It's uh, already been prepared, tumbled, cleaned, trimmed, and now I'm just putting in the primers that I'll be using.
I'm making four rounds with each powder charge with each bullet. In this case, it'll be 43 grains, then 44 grains, then 45 grains for this specific bullet. But it's all based on reloading data found in a reloading manual. And when I'm actually shooting the rounds, I will be recording the velocities to compare that to the velocities that are posted in my reloading manual. For seating depth, I load the bullet to two hundredths of an inch less than the average base to ogive length uh, that I measured earlier. I do two hundredths because that's the minimum uh, difference that the instructions in the comparator give. They say a minimum of two hundredths of an inch. Some people might be more confident doing less than that, but I don't want to push it. Since you're making a round outside of the published data for that round, meaning it could very well be much longer than the published data, it's always a good idea to make sure that you can chamber the round before you go through making all those bullets and find out somehow, in some way, for some reason, you can't chamber it. And when it's all said and done, I mark the powder charge in each round so that way if they somehow tumble out of the case or you know fall out in the car, I know which round is which. I'm testing at 100 yards and measuring the velocities of all the rounds that I'm shooting. Next it's just going to cycle through the groups that I got. Now granted I'm shooting a Ruger American. It's not the most accurate rifle in the world. It's just a deer hunting rifle. But you can see that a number of rounds are much more accurate than other ones. And of course some of the rounds I pulled which uh, make some of the groups hard to discern as being better or worse. But some groups are really good. So I think I'm going to look at these uh, groupings and decide which one's best for me, my budget, and what I intend to shoot. Thanks for watching.